If you ever wondered what they're doing during commercial breaks, Jack is fretting over his sports bets while John is rating the hot chicks on Fox News. Jack and John in the morning, weekdays 6 to 9 on The Voice of Lincoln, 1400 KLIN. How's everybody doing? Welcome back. Had enough Nelson talk yet? No, not the band Nelson. That's tomorrow. We go through all of their hits. Love and affection, after the rain, more than ever. Vote on the best. Gunner Nelson, Matthew, who's hotter? I mean, there's there's a lot to talk about. Jeez. Yeah, I know a lot about Nelson just from that, that is 12 second diatribe, don't I? That is disturbing how much you know about <laughs> Nelson. What? I was into him for a while. You would be. You're a jerk. Is that, what, is that what you were rocking there in that? Uh, I was in eighth grade. Everyone listened to crummy music in eighth grade. There's I a, didn't. It's not like you were into really good, you know. What were I you listening to. to in eighth grade? In eighth John grade? Bishop, see, eighth gotta, grade, in 1968 in Fremont. What were you listening to? It was not 1968. Let's see. I'm thinking back. Uh, it would have been mid 80s. Well, ACDC, of course. Oh, you uh, started to starting to get into Stevie Ray Vaughan. George Thorogood. In eighth grade. In eighth grade. Because I've got oh, taste. Forget it. You were listening to Wham! and the Pointer Sisters, oh, and I know it. Nobody, and I mean nobody who has any modicum of cool and masculinity, was listening to Wham! Ever. Ever. I have no comment on that. We need to get exactly, to our next interview. Exactly, because you had we're no modicum out of, of time. cool masculinity. We've got, we are running out of time. And we need to talk to our tech guru, Jason Peterson, president at Turbine Interactive. Jason, save me here, please. Guys, what's going on? <laughs> Not much. I have to tell you, um, I I would have to agree with Bishop that there is no degree of masculinity <laughs> if you did listen to Wham. Although I did listen to Nelson a little bit. There you go. <laughs> See? Well, that's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tomorrow's the big show. Tune in. Make sure, Jason. It's all right. How you doing, all man? Right. Merry good. Christmas. Hey, Merry yeah. Christmas, guys. How you doing? Good. good. Um, well, uh, we, we always have a lot of questions about technology. A lot of people have new uh, phones, tablets, whatever it might be from the Christmas season. A lot of questions. And we want to kind of hear what's coming up next in 2012. And uh, you've done some predictions. I wanted to get you on to talk a little bit about them. So let's get right into it. Um. The tablet world. I think that generated the most conversation around our family Christmas because you had a couple of people who got the uh, the Kindle Fire yep. Uh, yep. in my family, and then I know you know some other people are are thinking about now with some Christmas money buying those. What do you see happening in the tablet world? Does the gap narrow between the iPad and the competitors during 2012? Uh, it's a great question. I would say that the stat I read was this Christmas 30 percent. Of all tech gadgets purchased were tablets. Really? 30%? 30%. I mean, and, did, give us some historical perspective. How does that rival with maybe some other years and other gadgets that were really hot? You, and, know, you know, I, I mean, I would say I, I don't have any numbers in front of me. Right. But, but, but as far as, you know, from a perspective, I mean, this is, this is consistent with the PC revolution, but it's much more in the front of your typical consumer case in point you know you got a lot of baby boomers that are buying this both my in-laws one got a fire one got the the, the uh, nook mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so a lot of it has to do and this is what i keep telling people is this is the day and age of content i mean you guys are a content generated s- station so people want to consume content in a convenient fashion mm-hmm. so that's part of the reason why this whole tablet thing I- is taking off but to your point I mean, I think that the the big – one of my predictions is, um, you know, for a lot of us that clearly browse the Internet and, and use the Internet, um, sites are going to have to get their moxie on and figure out how to su- support and make it look good on a tablet. Right. So that's one of the things – a prediction I have is as this tablet usage goes way up – and more people are using the smartphones, you're going to have to start as a company making it easier to make that experience better. Isn't that already happening to some degree, I guess, with phones and mobile sites over the last few years where, where, where companies have had to be thinking about it? Or you think it will be more defined this year than I, it has? I think it's more defined this year. I mean, you'd be amazed um, in all the sites that we design. I would say, like, probably less than one out of every ten are willing to invest in that. But now... The statistics of people. I mean, again, the the other the other statistic I saw was 
that, what was it, 7%, I mean, there was this crazy amount of purchases with all the gift cards and stuff mm -hmm. like that. 7% were made on iPads on Christmas Day. Mm. So you can't ignore it. Yeah. No. So that's kind of part of it is, is I think that, that it's, 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 it's evolving the way we, we experience. So I, I think you're right. I think it's, to me, this is, I mean, last year was, you know, I think the, the, the iPad was getting the majority of the, you know, the press and stuff. I think it's going to really beef up even more this year. I think you're going to see this be more mass adoption year as far it, as everybody getting a now, tablet. Now, Jason, you mentioned designing websites, and I read this may be a very narrow question because not everyone out there is interested in designing a website, but small businesses or people that want to get online make their products available online. Yep. Is how difficult is it now because – You've got the traditional website that goes on your traditional computer. You've got the mobile sites that fit these smartphones. Now you've got to try to fit a tablet. Is there yep. something out there that can be easily integrated so that you can design one and it'll take care of all three? And, and, and the, the short answer is yes, if you design it the right way. So I tell people it's kind of like skinning it. So at the end of the day, if you have a site where your content is kind of in its own repository, you can put different skins to make it look correctly on different sizes. So that's the key. If you don't design it that way, yeah, then you're making three sites, and that's just stupid. But, I mean, even the, the other thing that's emerged, and this is kind of off-tangent, is you've seen some e-commerce sites now support inside of Facebook. So now you can do e-commerce inside of Facebook as well. Wow. So a lot of it is just making smart decisions. Mm -hmm. There's like umpteen million ways to build a website. Mm-hmm. You just got to make sure you pick the right technology so that it scales. I mean, that's 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 the challenge for a lot of business owners is where can I get the most bang for my buck? Jason Peterson, our guest uh, from Turbine Interactive, our tech guru. Before we get off tablets, I, I do want to talk about the market, though. Yes. I remember we talked about a month ago. You thought the Kindle Fire was probably the biggest competitor the yes. iPad has. Do you still see it that way going uh, into 2012? I, I think that right now... Amazon is still positioned. I mean, they have not released their numbers, but it's sick. It is. It has been widely adopted. It, it's been tremendously successful. It's two hundred bucks. It's I mean, two hundred bucks, I mean, guys. It's a. It's half half the price of the. I iPad. mean, it's it's a loss leader. I mean, at the end of the day, Amazon's betting on all the content they're going to sell. That's what they're doing, and it's a smart strategy. I mean, Amazon is a, you know, they, they've they've lived in the virtual world for this entire time of the internet. So, I think that. Um, right now, because Microsoft is kind of poking around, and it's good grief. I've read that they're not even going to have any sort of like new tablet technology for another year. So they're they're going to wow. be very late to the game. It's kind of like the Windows phones. They've really struggled. They're a decent product, but there's not a lot of adoption. My other prediction, this is off tangent, is yeah, I think right. BlackBerry is going to get acquired. I don't think BlackBerry is going to stick around as a – Isolated. The guys that are running that company up in Canada, man, they are just driving that sucker into the ground. So for those that have Blackberries, that is crazy. I I know, guys. I mean, I was a, a diehard Blackberry. We guy, were too. Yeah. They are they are tripping over their own two feet every time you look in the news, whether it's outages, um, you know, different issues, problems. They they still make some decent products, but the problem is they're so they're not keeping up. So I think Microsoft will acquire could BlackBerry. That, well, could that Microsoft, be a marriage that improves my, both of them? Because Microsoft yes. has lagged behind on the Windows phones. That's correct. BlackBerry's worked on the phones, but has probably made some questionable business decisions. Do you correct. think that could work? I, I think so. I mean, I think because for those that do use BlackBerry, it's it fits nicely with the whole Microsoft Exchange environment. So for those that do the real Windows things pretty heavily. And, and again, you know, honestly, from a keyboard standpoint, I still think BlackBerry makes the best phone that uses a keyboard. But definitely, I think that's something to kind of watch for is what happens to BlackBerry. And again, there's going to be some listeners out there, and I agree, my dad included, he has one now. Um, you know, they like it. I mean, it's a good phone, but just kind of be paying attention to that. That's one of my predictions. But I think back to your original question about the whole Kindle Fire, I think that right now still is positioned as the best competitor. Amazon's got a recipe there, and they've got a little bit more control of the environment, whereas a lot of the other Android tablets are still just, I don't know, it's its its six months before I see something that's really going to make state claim to the, the iPad. I think. And, and at some point, I, the iPad's going to be updated yet again. Yep. And, and Apple, you know, 
just as they have been with all of this technology, has always been the leader. So what's the next big development that they come out with that makes everyone else have to catch up? Well, I, I've heard that the, the rumor is, is Steve Jobs' birthday is February 24th, and they're pushing hard to release the iPad 3 then. So that's, really? that's the rumor, okay, the refresh. So, so yeah, the question is, so what is, what's the new iPad going to have? Um, that's, a, that's a great question. I do think one thing on the iPad is the camera sucks, okay? Um, that's not a huge evolution, but I would say, I also read, this is kind of a side tangent, one of the first movies ever, it would probably be something at the Ross Theater, was filmed entirely on a smartphone, Okay. Hollywood commercial movie. really yes okay <laughs> think about that they were able second. to get the because because one thing I've noticed you know when we did our kind of our little mock flyover the audio quality I, I'm big into audio I'm you know of course, radio guy absolutely. it was not that good no, but they were able no. to pull it off they did you, you can the amount of add-on devices you can buy we actually bought like an external mic yeah. and you can use Bluetooth and different okay. things so you can improve the audio okay. but honest to goodness I mean that is just insane you talk about the the amount of cost it takes now to be able to produce something that's again technology quality the aesthetics may still suck but uh so that's so i think the ipad 3 is going to have a much much more improved camera i had eddie email me and he was asking he said make sure and ask jason about the iphone 5 is that getting released in 2012 uh yes absolutely that's honestly guys what i'm holding out for um you know i think the the whole Surrey technology, although it initially I thought it was kind of quirky and silly. Here's the thing that, that is interesting about it is because of the way it was developed, there is some serious competition Excuse me, to the way people are searching for content, and that's a competitive advantage over Google. Mm. So Google is really, really concerned about what Surrey could do, because the way Google makes all their money is off of search, guys, make no mistake. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how they make their money. Um, so ironically, the Surrey technology, I think, will evolve, and you'll see that in all their devices. Um, I think the iPhone 5, you're going to see different um, sizes. I think they're going to get away. They're going to realize that not everybody wants a three and a half inch screen. Um, you know, with these, some of these Android, I saw ones coming out like five inches. I mean, yeah, those Samsung ones are. Yeah, huge. you're gonna yeah. like put like a tablet in your in your pocket. Exactly. Right? It's it's kind of ridiculous on the one hand. So you got to find that sort of happy median. But I think that's the the my my hope is that you know the you might see there's a rumor that there's a seven inch in tablet of the iPad. Although I just read the yes, yesterday that they're thinking, well, maybe not. Mm -hmm. But that's the one thing about Apple. If there's anything they've been able to do is they do a heck of a job. I don't know how, but they keep a, a tight rein on those rumors. So you, you hear about it. The only one that the, – the two and my other one that I was going to mention is um, in, in Jobs' biography, he talks about um, he had kind of a slate of innovation. So as he was getting ready to pass, interestingly enough, they consider that one of his most brilliant periods because it's like he realized, crap, I'm not going to be around forever, mm -hmm. so I'm going to start pushing Crank, out, cranking stuff out stuff faster. Yeah. One of the things, now again, we'll see if it, it sticks. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, two years ago, the tablet wasn't even an industry, and now it's, as we're discussing, um, he has supposedly an idea of how to reinvent the way television is delivered. Okay, now you've got you know we've got Roku and you've got all these you know individual content silos. You can mm -hmm. you Netflix, um, Hulu, yeah, Hulu. Hulu, all that stuff, and you got the TV set. And those boxes. are all growing. And though, those are all Netflix growing like had crazy. a bad year, but I still yes, think those are correct. Those are big. I know? agree. So they are developing a hardware TV. Okay, so it's an actual physical TV. Now the details of how that changes things. So again, think of Apple's philosophy of how they wrap everything together in one umbrella, try to make it simple. So they've had the iTunes store, they have the delivery mechanism. The thing that Apple's been able to do better than anybody else is they've been able to make deals with these big, large media brokers and mm -hmm. media companies. So watch out for this Apple TV thing is, is they released some stuff yesterday and very much you're going to probably see some sort of hardware 
television in addition to the little set top box Apple TV device this year. So All that's right. another big big mm. thing to watch for. I, right. I've been I, I figured something like that was coming soon and uh, the more we hear the more that sounds likely. Well, uh, all kinds of interesting stuff, Jason. We could go further into it, yes, but we we're short Absolutely. on time. We'll have you on again in Sounds 2012. Good, Check on yeah. some more hey. topics. And hey, thanks so if, much, man. If folks Matt. have questions also for Jason, shoot us an email. Um, if you've got questions about tech, tablets, whatever, those sorts of things, we'd be glad to ask him of him uh, as he comes on in the future. So, Jason, from Turbine Interactive, we always appreciate it. We'll talk to you again, man. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for having me on.